Hello everyone and welcome back to Moose Villa Off Grid. Today we're going to look at some of the accessories that I have acquired for my Celestron 11 inch Edge HD telescope. Now to begin with let's take a look at some of the things that I hope to see with my scope and I hope to photograph in the near future. What are some of the things out there that really excite me and that I would like to be able to acquire and share with you in the very near future. Now of course when you look through a telescope the things that you see are what they call faint fuzzies. Just little tiny fuzz balls. You really have to put in an effort to be able to see some of the deep sky objects that are out there in the night sky. And by deep sky objects, I mean things that are out beyond our solar system. Things like gaseous clouds that we call nebula, galaxies, star clusters, open clusters, various things like that. Of course, there's also big things like constellations that you can go out and observe. And of course, there's our solar system objects the moon, the planets, the asteroids, the various satellites that are rotating up there around the Earth. All of these are things that you can use your telescope for to be able to view and each one of them is somewhat specialized. So what are some of the things that really excite me that I want to go out to see? Well, one of the things I have wanted to photograph ever since I first saw this particular deep sky object was what is called the Horsehead Nebula. And this is located up in the constellation of Orion, right next to one of the three belt stars. When you look at it through a telescope, it's going to look like nothing more than a little tiny black speck and stuff. But when you photograph it, by using a long exposure and by tracking the stars as they move across the sky and compensating for their movement. Actually, you're compensating for the movement of the Earth. You're not compensating for the movement of the stars. But nonetheless, when you take a long exposure and then process it in your computer, you come out with some very dynamic images. And these images that I'm showing here on the screen were not ones that I have captured, but I hope to share that with you very soon. These are images that are out there in Creative Commons that were allowed to use because other people have not copyrighted them and have put them out there so that we're able to see them. So the Horsehead Nebula is one of the objects that I really want to see. The Great Orion Nebula, which is in the Sword of Orion, is another one of the objects. The Andromeda Galaxy and its two satellite galaxies is another one of the objects. The Great Hercules Star Cluster, it's a globular cluster, a big collection of stars that's all crammed together is another one of the objects I'd like to see. The Omega Centauri globular cluster, which you can only see from dark skies like down in Key West or in the Southern Hemisphere, that's another object I would like to see. And I want to share all of this with you. Not necessarily the technical aspects, the F ratios and the intricacies, but I do want to share the excitement and the fun of astronomy with you. Here on Moose Villa Off Grid, we occasionally get into the technical aspects like in wildlife photography and things like that, but a lot of what I want to share with you is the excitement of just going out and enjoying the outdoors and nature and things like that. So let's take a look at some of the accessories that I have gotten for my telescope to increase its use and to be able to diversify into some of these new areas that I just m mentioned. Just like a sailboat, a telescope 
is the bass instrument and then you add a lot of things on it to be able to do other things like astrophotography and be able to look at a wider field and to be able to focus the telescope without causing vibration and to be able to eliminate dew from the mirrors and the corrector plates and various things like that. These are all accessories that you buy for your telescope. So let's jump right into it right now. Okay, the next accessory I'm installing is a dovetail bar kit and this will go up on top of the telescope. There'll be another one that will go on the bottom and this will allow us to put accessories on here to move them back and forth such as a piggyback camera mount or a counterweight set and things like that. This particular dovetail bar is made by Los Mondi and it comes with a set of spacers and so I'm going to attach these spacers to begin with. They do come with a couple of screws but they don't come with the Allen wrench so you'll need to supply your own Allen wrench. It's a 532nd. Now the spacer bars do have some adjustment right and left and so I'm going to try and put it right in the middle It has a similar one up at the front, so I'll put that one on next. So next I'm going to install the dovetail plate, and it also has four screws, but these screws are a little bit different size than the first ones. These use a 3 sixteenths inch Allen tool. And I'm not going to tighten them down until I get all four started. I'll adjust the four screws to the bottom. And then take a look and make sure that I like the placement. That looks good and then tighten them down. The next thing that we have is a screw that goes into the bracket and this just keeps your accessories from falling off the back end if they become loose. So we'll stick that in here. Now we'll work on the bracket that goes on the bottom side of the tube. The bracket for the bottom side is exactly like the bracket for the top side. You have a couple of spacer blocks that go up here on the tube and then the bracket goes on here. I don't see any need to uh, film this entire process. We'll come back as soon as I'm done attaching this and then we'll look at some of the accessories that go on here. Then I go back and tighten down the screws, each one individually. And that completes the install of the dovetail bars. Some of the accessories. This is a counterweight that helps to counterweight when you put other accessories on top of the scope. And this just attaches here on the bottom like that. And then we do have another one of these retaining screws that we can put in here. And this will help to prevent this from just falling off if it becomes loose. Just a protection mechanism. Now 
the other end of the scope. As I mentioned, one of the items that we have is a piggyback mount for a camera. And so we can put that on here, tighten that down, and that way we can mount our camera up here on top of the scope. And we can use the counterweight on the bottom to help to balance the scope. Okay, the next accessories that I have for my scope is an electric focuser to be able to focus the image. It's important when you have a scope as high powered as this to not be touching the scope any more than you have to. It causes vibration and the stars will vibrate around. So if you have an electronic focuser, that keeps you from touching the scope. This focuser is attached through what appears like a telephone cable into the base, and then you control it with your hand controller that came with the telescope by doing the up and down arrows, and that focuses it in and out. It does have a control where you can control the speed of the focuser, so it does just little micro adjustments and things such as that. The next thing that we have is our star diagonal that you see attached here onto the back of the scope and that takes the light rays that come directly down the tube and turn them at a right angle so you can sit here and look into the scope without having to get down under the scope and a star diagonal accepts your eyepieces and here we have a Teleview 41 millimeter panoptic and it has a couple of set screws here that you attach and now we have an eyepiece and we can look here and look at a comfortable angle into the scope without having to get all the way down here. You can imagine when the scope is pointed up towards the top or the zenith you would really have to get down low to be able to see into the eyepiece. So by doing a diagonal, you're able to look at an angle. Now this diagonal is a two inch diagonal, which basically means that it will accept a two inch eyepiece with a diameter of two inches, but it will also accept the standard eyepieces that are inch and a half by using an adapter and the adapter comes with the diagonal so I usually keep my adapter permanently attached to my eyepiece and as you can see it fits right in there you clamp down the two thumb screws and again you can see through the eyepiece and see the objects that you're viewing. I'm sure some of you may have questions about what eyepieces you purchase for your scope and that's somewhat specific to the scope that you buy. I'll do a video about how to pick eyepieces for a telescope and picking eyepieces has to do with your field of view that you can actually see and also the magnification that you want to be able to magnify the images. Another accessory you see on the scope here is this finder scope and this came along with the telescope and this allows you to look through and to be able to find objects and center them in the finder scope before looking through the telescope because of course when you're looking through an 11 inch telescope this magnifies things tremendously and so it really helps to be able to use a finder scope. Now another accessory that I purchased is called a Telrad and this is an even more rudimentary type of finder scope. It has a couple of circles in it and you can put this up here on top of the bracket and be able to roughly find a, a star field 
and using a much wider field of view. We'll take a look at that out in the field and how that works in a future video, but that's one of the other attachments and I will get a bracket for it to go up here on top of the dovetail so that way all I have to do is put it up here anytime I need to use it. I don't want to keep all of these attachments on the telescope when it's stored in the case because it increases the weight of the telescope and the fork mount portion is already up around 70 pounds and the tripod is another 60 or 70 pounds. So anything that we can take off of the telescope will help to be able to manage it when we've got to manhandle it from the case up onto the tripod. The next set of accessories that we have is a set of filters for the telescope. I have a couple of filters specifically for moon observing. One is a variable polarizer filter that will darken the field. And then I also have a neutral density filter in two inches and a neutral density filter in inch and a quarter. And this will help to darken the moon a little bit so it's not such a bright blob in the telescope when you look through. Another set of filters that I have is a set of colored filters. This is red, blue, and yellow and also another neutral density filter. And these are all inch and a half, so they will go into the inch and a half eyepiece and allow you to increase contrast and to be able to see features on the moon and the planets a little bit better. There are other filters you can buy for your telescope. One is called an Oxygen 3. There's an ultra high contrast UHC filter. There's a hydrogen alpha filter. And all of these are very specialized filters for deep sky observing. We'll get into that at a later date. At the current time, I don't have any of those specialized filters, but they are things that I do plan to purchase in the future. Another item I have from my telescope is a battery pack in order to power the telescope. And this is a Celestron Power Tank 17. And that provides us 17 amp hours of power while we're out in the field. So I don't have to hook up to my car battery or to something else. It also has a couple of lights built into it and an FM radio and things like that. The primary thing I got it for was to be able to power my scope when I'm out in the field. And the last item that I have is a red flashlight. Red allows you to maintain your night vision outside and it's very important not to ruin your night vision when you've gotten acclimated to the darkness. And so I picked up this red flashlight. I also have one of those headlights that has a red light in it, and I'll be using that on occasion also. That's our video on accessories for my Celestron 11-inch Edge HD telescope. If you would, please hit the like icon. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing. We put out a variety of content, at least one video every week about topics related to wildlife photography, off-grid living, tiny houses, and astronomy and astrophotography. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you back here again very soon. Goodbye.